In this lesson, we'll take a look at two examples of determining a future time using clock arithmetic or mod 12 arithmetic. And we'll actually end up finding the sum two ways. To begin, if it is three o'clock, what time will it be in 79 hours? Because clock arithmetic is mod 12 arithmetic, we can write this as three mod 12 plus 79 mod 12. And notice that three mod 12 does not simplify because three is less than 12. And now we have a choice. We can evaluate 79 mod 12 and then find the sum or first find the sum and then evaluate the sum mod 12. Let's first evaluate 79 mod 12, which is equal to the remainder when 79 is divided by 12. 79 divided by 12 is equal to six with the remainder of seven, which indicates 79 mod 12 equals seven. And therefore we can write the sum as three mod 12 plus seven mod 12. And now we sum three and seven, which gives us 10 mod 12. And again, since 10 is less than 12, 10 mod 12 equals 10, indicating it's 10 o'clock. This method is more the approach if we were actually gonna use the clock to determine the future time. Using the clock, we replace 12 with zero, and for three o'clock, the hour hand is pointing at the three. And then from here, we'd move ahead 79 hours. And since 79 divided by 12 equals six with the remainder of seven, the six indicates how many 12s are in 79, which on the clock indicates how many full rotations from three we would have, and then we'd have to go seven more hours to reach 79 hours. So starting at three o'clock, let's count ahead 79 hours. Going ahead 12 hours, again, each rotation represents 12 hours, so we have 12 hours, 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, 60 hours, 72 hours, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, and it's 10 o'clock. Going back over to the original sum, the second method is to sum three and 79 first, which gives us 82 mod 12, which equals a remainder when 82 is divided by 12. 82 divided by 12 equals six with a remainder of 10, indicating 82 mod 12 equals 10, giving us the same time of 10 o'clock. If we did want to use the clock for this sum, we would start at zero and move ahead 82 hours. That would give us six complete rotations, and then 10 additional hours. Let's go ahead and show that as well. Starting at zero, again, each full rotation is 12 hours, so we have 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and once again, it's 10 o'clock. For our second example, if it is seven, what time will it be in 81 hours? We can write this as seven mod 12 plus 81 mod 12. Again, we'll go ahead and show this both ways. So let's evaluate 81 mod 12, which is equal to the remainder when 81 is divided by 12, which gives us nine. Here we have seven mod 12 plus nine mod 12. And here's one drawback in using this first method. Notice when we sum seven and nine, the result is greater than or equal to 12. We get 16 mod 12. And now we need to evaluate this to get our final result. 16 divided by 12 equals one with the remainder of four, indicating it's four o'clock. Using the clock, we would start with the hour hand on the seven and move ahead 81 hours, which again would be six complete rotations plus nine additional hours. Let's go ahead and show that as well. We have 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, and it's four o'clock. And for the second more efficient method, we first find the sum of seven and 81, which gives us 88 mod 12, which is equal to the remainder when 88 is divided by 12, which is four, indicating it's four o'clock. And again, to use the clock for this method, we would start at zero and count ahead 88 hours, which would be seven complete rotations and four additional hours. And let's go ahead and show that. Again, starting at zero, we count ahead 88 hours. So we have 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88 hours, it's four o'clock. I hope you found this helpful.